Hi everybody, I'm Eli Boyarski from Bar Ilan University and I'm presenting Don't Split, Try to Work It Out, Bypassing Conflicts in Multi-Agent Pathfinding. This has been a joint work by myself, Ariel Fellner, Ronnie Stern and Guni Sharon. Uh, I'm a master's student from Bar Ilan University, they're all from Ben Gurion University, but I knew the guys when, when they were still uh, PhD students in uh, Bar Ilan. Okay, so in a multi-agent pathfinding problem, the input is a map with n locations and a set of k agents, each one with the start and goal state. An agent can move up, down, left, or right, or wait. The task is to find a path for each agent such that the paths don't collide, meaning two agents can't be, can't be in the same place at the same time. And we want to minimize the sum of travel costs. This is an interesting problem. It has uh, multiple apl applications in many fields. If you haven't seen the Kiva video of automated assembly uh, warehouses, you really should. It's cool. OK, so in an optimal pathfinding uh, problem, the n to the k states and the branching factor of 5 to the k. It's an NP hard uh, search pro problem. And obviously, plain A star can't do it because the branching factor is too large. In the past few years, there have been attempts to uh, solve the uh, multi-agent pathfinding optimally with search uh, by Stanley with his A star plus OD plus ID, uh, ICTS by Sharon, M star uh, by Wagner and Chosset, and CBS by Sharon et al. Our aim today is to improve on CBS. The underlying idea for CBS is that instead, instead of searching in a K-agent search space, like A-star would, CBS plans for single agents, but under constraints, meaning we only plan, plan for individual agents at a, at a time, and then resolve conflicts between the plans. Yeah, let's see an example here. CBS searches this constraint tree. Here we have, this is our problem. Mouse number one wants to get to cheese number one, and mouse no, number two wants to get to cheese number two. And uh, at the root node, mouse number one chose A1, C, and G1. Mouse number two chose B1, C, creating a conflict here in, uh, in C in time step two, and G2. When we try to validate this uh, node, we find that it isn't goal because we have the conflict here of, uh, of A1, A2, C, and time step two. So we perform the split operator. Uh, either the logic of the split operator is that either mouse, mouse number one can't be in C in time step two, or mouse number two mustn't be in C in time step two. They can't both be there at the same time. So we create two child nodes, each one with a new constraint. Sorry. Uh, here we constrain the left mouse not to enter C at time step two, so it must wait uh, before entering C. That's why the, the overall cost is now seven, and there's no conflict, so we find a goal on the, in the left child. The, the right child is, of course, also a goal, but we don't get to it. To speed up A star, the multiple approaches that are well known. Uh, you can use uh, better heuristics, so better state, state representations. You're the experts. You're the expert, sorry. To speed up CBS, you can merge coupled agents and get a smaller constraint tree uh, at a price. You can use faster solvers for single agents, like EPA star or M star. Or you can try to reduce the size of the constraint tree. That's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, the reason is that many different constraint trees are possible for the same problem. Either because different paths uh, for agents may be found under the same constraints, or because uh, basic CBS chooses the conflict to resolve arbitrarily just the first one. And in, in general, a smaller constraint tree means faster search. So to motivate our improvement of uh, bypassing conflicts, let's look at uh, this example. Here, mouse number one unfortunately chose B, D, F, and G1. 
even though intuitively we, we would want mouse number one to just go to his piece of cheese and mouse number two to just go to his piece of cheese, but they don't have this general knowledge. So mouse number one uh, chose B, D, F, and G1. Mouse number two it had no choice but to choose B, creating a conflict, D, creating a conflict, E, and G2. Uh, then okay, we constrain mouse number one not to be either not to be at uh, B at times of two or not to be at D at times of two, uh, B at times of one, sorry, or D at times of two. So mouse number one chooses A, C, E, and G1, creating a new conflict here in E. And then mouse number two is constrained not to be at E at time step three. So it fixes its path, and now we have the, the path that, that we wanted in the first place. This results in this relatively complex constraint tree. But uh, like I said earlier, we would just want to this tree to begin with, if we could. So we saw that CBS is sensitive to the choice of paths by the agents. And the question is, can we, we replace a bad choice, like the bad cho choice the mouse number one made, without splitting and uh, enlarging the size of the search space? The idea is that when we generate the left child with this new path for mouse number one, we could say, hey, that's a better path for mouse number one. Let's, let's not split. Let's just uh, adopt this path. So we would. Uh, take this better path up and get our root node back with a, an, an improved path for mouse number one. And again, splitting and uh, looking at our, our right child now, this is a better path for mouse number two now. So we could say, okay, let's adopt this bypass without splitting and just get what we wanted, the root node with the optimal paths. So how do, how do you know when to adopt a bypass? The method that, that we recommend is to notice that here in the original root node, we have two conflicts in B and in D. But in, in the left child here, there's just one conflict. So that's a way to recognize that it's a better path. So that, that's enough of a reason to, to adopt a bypass here and go back to the root node. So this should say one now, because we have one conflict here in E, but here in, in the right child, there are zero conflicts. So it, it again is a better path and we can adopt it. So our, our first problem, in improvement, bypass one, just picks at either of the immediate uh, children of, uh, of the node, and if it finds a helpful bypass, like I just uh, informally defined, this path is adopted without splitting. The, the best part about bypass one is that it incurs no overhead at all, because the two child nodes are generated anyway by, by CBS. We just inspect them before inserting, inserting them into open. But what if a bypass isn't immediately helpful? For example, the, the number of conflicts can even go up. So bypass one won't adopt it, of course. But bypass two searches the subtree under N more deeply for, help, for a helpful bypass, as long as the cost that doesn't increase. Just like we saw earlier, that we adopted paths only from uh, child nodes that have the same cost. So as long as the cost doesn't increase, we, we perform sorry, a deeper, deeper search for, conf for, a, for a bypass. And if we find it, find it anywhere in the subtree, we adopt it. The, the search depth is bounded by a parameter, but we just found that a, a parameter of infinity was usually the best, because there aren't that many uh, child nodes in the su subtree with the same cost. So if we look at uh, our results, comparing BP1 and BP2 against basic CBS, the red line here is CBS, and the 
the green and blue lines are bypass one and bypass two. Uh, the domain here is Dragon Age Origins maps. We see that the success rate here, higher is better, for, uh, for bypass one and bypass two is much larger. Uh, 30 or 40 percent more success when we go up to 60 and 70 agents. And the runtime here, of course, lower is better, is again significantly improved. Here, once, once we stopped running, uh, stopped computing uh, the runtime run for CBS, we could, we could uh, calculate or average more problems for bypass one, bypass two, that, that's why there's a jump. Comparing bypass uh, search to state-of-the-art sol solvers at the time on the same maps, we, we find that uh, the topology of the map uh, matters. Here, uh, this is unaided CBS. The green line is CBS with the independence detection. And we see that BP helps CBS go up and compete with other, other state-of-the-art solvers. And even in, in the more constrained topologies here, where there are many cor corridors, and here where, where there are corridors and some open spaces, BP was actually the best solver. But uh, where there are more open spaces in this map, the BP still wasn't the best solver, but it, it was among the best. So to summarize, BP is the first attempt to, to reduce the size of the constraint tree in CBS, and thus improving CBS. It's cheap and simple. And bypassing conflicts, instead of splitting, it yields uh, significant, significant speedups uh, sometimes, so, so you should really try it. Uh, if I'm allowed to tease, we have even better results in each guy or, or later in SOX. That you can uh, see this is BP, the red line, and we have this nice blue line that's, that's even better here in the success rate. So come see us again. Thank you.